Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about logarithmic functions. As a motivation, we're looking for an inverse to an exponential function. So given an exponential function f of x equals to b of x for some b greater than 0, we can't just simply take the x root of both sides when trying to solve this because x is a variable, not necessarily a whole number. To move forward, I'm going to start by changing notation. I'm going to let y equal to b of x instead of f of x equal to b of x. And then I'm going to name the parts. I've got my fixed base, b, I've got my input, x, and I've got my output, y. The idea is if I know b and I know x, I can find y pretty easily. However, what if the situation was different? What if I was given b and I was given y, but I was not given x? The goal is to find x now, and the question is how do we do that? This motivates the construction of something called log base b of y equals to x. Therefore, log with the base of b given the number of y, will output x. This will be called a logarithm of base b. Again, looking at my right-hand side, y equals b to the x, if I am given b and I am given y, the logarithm will tell you how to calculate x. This is what gives you the motivation for a logarithmic function. There are instances where logarithms are easy to compute by hand, but there are other times that you need to put it into a calculator because it's not necessarily a nice number. So let's run through some quick examples. And I'll leave this formula above, b to the y equals x, if and only if, log base b of x equals y. So let's compute log base 2 of 16. So what we're looking for is 2 to what power actually equals 16. So we're basically solving 2 to the x equals to 16. But in this case, the log is pretty easy to compute because one can deduce that 2 to the 4 is equal to 16, which tells you that log base 2 of 16 is equal to 4. So at the end of the day, logs are simply just telling you what power to raise a base by to give you the desired number. In our case, the base was 2 and the desired number was 16. Therefore, the log base 2 of 16 is 4. For another example, take 5 to the 14th equals to 2x and write it in logarithmic form. And this just uses the formula above. Going through the computations, you get log base 5 of 2x equals to 14 and you're done. Now let's jump into the formal definition of a logarithmic function. A logarithmic function has the form f of x equals to log base b of x, where x is our variable input, b is our fixed base that is greater than 0, not equal to 1, and then f of x will be the entire output. We do have some special cases. If ever you see log without a base written, that means log base 10. Computers and calculators typically have base 10 as a default, so if you just see the word log, it's by default base 10. If ever you see ln of x, that means log base e of x, and is called the natural log, where e is Euler's constant. This button shows up on calculators as well. So let's talk about what these look like as graphs. Given f of x equals to log base b of x, where b is some positive number, not equal to 1, we essentially have two cases. One case is where b is greater than 1, and the other case where b is less than 1, but greater than 0. In the first case, if b is greater than 1, our graph will look like this. It'll be an increasing curve that crosses the x-axis at the point 1, 0. Now we've said that logarithms are inverse functions of exponential functions, so let's look at the graph of the corresponding exponential function. We see that reflected across this diagonal line, these functions are essentially mirror images of one another. Again, when b is greater than 1. In our second case, where b is a positive number less than 1, our logarithmic function looks like this decreasing curve that still crosses the x-axis at the point 1, 0. And similarly, if we reflect this function about this diagonal line, we get the function f inverse of x equals to b of x, the inverse exponential function. So just like before, these look like mirror images of one another. Notice that in both cases, log base b of x will have a domain of 0 to infinity and a range of negative infinity to positive infinity. In other words, logarithmic functions cannot input negative numbers. This is why you're going to have the vertical asymptote at x equals 0, aka the y-axis. We'll see in future examples how transformations of these graphs can move the vertical asymptote and can move the domain, but the range will always stay the same. Before we go into some actual examples, I want to talk about some calculator tips. When using a calculator, you'll see buttons like log and ln. And if it's a scientific calculator and not necessarily a programming calculator, you can't input actual logs. It'll always be a log of base 10 or a natural log. So if I need to calculate logs with bases that are not 10 or are not e, the question is how do I do that with this kind of calculator? 
It's actually pretty simple. You're going to end up using something called the change of base formula. So if I need to compute log base b of x for some b not equaling to 10, what I'll do is I'll type log of x divided by log of b into my calculator. Even though these logs have base 10, dividing it by log of your base that you want will give you the correct number. And this is a trick that'll always work. And whenever dealing with natural logs, the only reason you should use this button is if you're meaning to use log base e of a number. Now that that's out of the way, let's actually graph some examples. Our first example will graph using an xy chart. So my inputs x will be the numbers 1 3rd, 1, and 3. My domain doesn't allow for negative numbers, so I'll only input positive ones. So with this logarithmic function, my base is 3, so I'm looking for numbers to raise 3 by so that I get x. Starting with 1 3rd, I notice that 3 to the negative 1 is equal to 1 3rd, so log base 3 of 1 3rd is equal to negative 1. If this concept is still kind of confusing, make sure to go back to the first slide and study that information. Or try plugging this information into a calculator. Running through the other computations, I notice that 3 to the 0 is equal to 1, so log base 3 of 1 equals 0, and 3 to the 1 equals 1, so log base 3 of 3 is equal to 1. And now that I have this data, I can plug this information onto the xy plane and connect it with the respective curve. Therefore, this is what the graph of log base 3 of x looks like. Like with exponential functions, sometimes drawing the generic picture is a good idea, and all you'll need is two pieces of information. Let's look at some graph transformations. Also, a good rule of thumb to think about is that log base b of b is always equal to the number 1. This always gives us an easy point in our logarithmic graphs to calculate. So consider the function f of x is equal to log base 4 of x plus 4. The x plus 4 should be indicative of a shift to the left by 4 units in this transformation. So the first thing I'll do is I'll draw our parent graph log base 4 of x, which looks like this. Log base 4 of x will cross the x-axis at the point 1, 0, and it'll also contain the point 4, 1, because log base 4 of 4 is equal to 1, per the rule on the top of the screen here. Now, looking at this leftward shift by 4 units, I can take the graph I just drew and basically move it to the left by 4 units. When I sketch this, I get a drawing that looks like this, and I can move my point 1, 0 to the left by 4 units, giving me the new point, negative 3, 0. And this is definitely a legal move, because when I evaluate f at negative 3, I get 0 as an answer. Therefore, the point negative 3, 0 is a point in my transformed graph. So this is pretty good for a sketch, but the only other piece of information I should input is the vertical asymptote. So the first graph that I drew in white originally had a vertical asymptote of x equals to 0, in other words, the y-axis. But since I had a leftward shift of 4 units, that vertical asymptote got shifted to the left by 4 units as well. Therefore, in my graph transformation, I have a vertical asymptote of x equals to negative 4. Now I can read off my domain and range of my new function. The domain is going to be negative 4 to infinity because I've pushed the graph 4 units to the left, and my range is going to be all real numbers. Let's look at another transformation. We're going to graph f of x equals to log base 7 of x minus 3. And the first thing we'll do is we'll draw the parent function log base 7 of x. This parent function will have an x-intercept of 1, 0, and it'll have the point 7, 1 because log base 7 of 7 is equal to 1. In drawing the generic picture, I'm mostly concerned about the vertical asymptotes. There is going to be a right shift by 3 units, so I'm going to take my parent graph and I'm going to move it to the right by 3 units. We see that moving the point 1, 0 to the right by 3 units, we get 4, 0 as a result. Our original parent graph had a vertical asymptote at x equals 0, and this got shifted to the right by 3 units as well. So our vertical asymptote becomes x equals 3. Therefore, the domain of this new function will be 3 to infinity. In this next example, we're going to be given a function f of x equals to log base 6 of 2 of x minus 1, and then I'm going to solve for the inverse of this function. A rule to pay attention to is that b raised to log b of x gives you x. In other words, b and log b will end up canceling, leaving you with x. And this is a good rule to remember. I have another video entitled Properties of Logarithms that have more rules like this. So to find f inverse of x, I'll set y equal to log base 6 of 2 of x minus 1, and
and then I'll interchange the letters x and y to get x equals log base 6 of 2 times y minus 1. Since these two quantities are equal, and my log is to the base of 6, I'm essentially going to lift this equation by 6 to give me 6 to the x equals to 6 to the log base 6 of 2y minus 1. The reason that this is a legal move is because x equals to log base 6 of 2y minus 1. Therefore, 6x is equal to 6 times log base 6 of 2y minus 1. And now given the rule I have at the top of the page, the left hand side simplifies to 2y minus 1. And now all I need to do is solve for y. Running through the steps, I end up with y equaling to 6 to the x plus 1 divided by 2. Therefore, f inverse of x is equal to 1 half times quantity 6 to the x plus 1, and we're done. Since I started with the logarithmic function and found its inverse, I ended up with an exponential function. If I started with an exponential function and found its inverse, I ended up with a logarithmic function.